Hello grade 12s and welcome to this lesson on solving cubic equations. Solving cubic equations is very much like solving quadratic equations. We first need to factorize the expression and then equate each term to zero. Let's try a question together. Solve the equation x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6 is equal to zero. We start by finding the factors of negative 6. Factors are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 3. We will use the factor theorem to determine the factors. Let's substitute these values into the expression and see which ones give us the answer of 0. f of 1 is equal to 1 cubed minus 6 multiplied by 1 squared plus 11 multiplied by 1 minus 6. This is equal to 0. Therefore, x minus 1 is a factor of x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6. We found the first factor of the expression. Now let's find the other two using the same method. f of negative 1 is equal to negative 24. f of 2 is equal to 0. f of negative 2 is equal to negative 60. f of 3 is equal to 0 f of negative 3 is equal to negative 120. Therefore, x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 by x minus 3 is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal 1, or x is equal 2, or x is equal 3. Now let's try another one using synthetic division. Remember, we covered this skill in the last lesson. Determine the values of x if x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x plus 10 is equal to 0. The factors of 10 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 10. Now let's use the factors of 10 to find one of the factors of the expression. f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 cubed minus 6 multiplied by negative 1 squared plus 3 multiplied by negative 1 plus 10 is equal to 0. So x plus 1 is a factor. Now let's set up our table for the synthetic division method. The variables are in the top row in descending order. The coefficients are in the second row and x equals negative 1 is in the third row. We bring down the coefficient of x cubed. Negative 1 multiplied by 1 gives us negative 1. The sum of negative 6 and negative 1 is negative 7. Negative 1 multiplied by negative 7 gives us positive 7. The sum of 3 and 7 is 10. Negative 1 multiplied by 10 is equal to negative 10. And the sum of 10 and negative 10 is 0. This means that the trinomial is x squared minus 7x plus 10. The next step is to factorize the trinomial. Therefore, x plus 1 by x minus 2 by x minus 5 is equal to 0. And x is equal to negative 1, or x is equal to 2, or x is equal to 5. Now let's join Tebucho and his teacher as they go through how to solve for the unknown in a cubic equation. As you know, we can represent all equations as graphs, and a cubic function is no different. The graph of a cubic function would look something like this. And just as in quadratic equations, when we solve for x in the function, we have to find the x-intercept or the roots of the function. If you take a close look at the graph of the cubic function though, you will see that in this case, there are three intercepts with the x-axis. This means that we need to find three solutions for x. With this in mind, are you ready to get started? Yes, let's do it. Great. Let's start with this example. Given 6x cubed minus 5x squared minus 17x plus 6 equal to zero. Solve for x. That looks just like the cubic function we worked on last time. You're right, but before we continue, I'd like to go back to something quickly. 
We know from quadratic equations that if we have two factors multiplied together and equal to zero, then either factor could be equal to zero. It follows then that if we have three factors multiplied together which equal to zero, then each of the factors could be equal to zero. So, in a cubic equation, in order to solve for the unknown, we would first need to factorize and then solve for x, in the same way we do for quadratic equations. I think I can handle that. We learned how to factorize a cubic function in the last lesson. Off you go then. First, I need to find the factors of the constant. The factors of 6 are plus or minus 1, 2, 3, or 6. Then we substitute each of these into the expression until we find a factor of the equation by trial and error. I'll try one first to see if it's a factor. If I substitute one into the expression and then simplify, I get negative 10. So x minus one isn't a factor. Let me try two this time. I substitute two for x, which gives me zero. So x minus two is a factor. Good. And what's the next step? Next, we need to find the other factors. We know that a cubic function is a binomial multiplied by a trinomial. We already have a binomial factor, so we need to find the trinomial factor. And how do we find the trinomial? We can find the trinomial by inspection. We know that one of the factors is x minus 2. In order to get a cubic function, we would need to multiply that by a trinomial, which we can write as ax squared plus bx plus c, which means that to find the other factors, I need to find the values of a, b, and c in the trinomial. I'll start with a first. x times 6x squared gives me 6x cubed. So, a is 6. Minus 2 times minus 3 gives me 6, so C must be minus 3. To find B, I multiply the first term in the first bracket with the second term of the second bracket, which gives me Bx squared. Then I multiply the second term of the first bracket by the first term in the second bracket, negative 12x squared. If I collect these, they must give me negative 5x squared. So if I solve the equation, I get that b must be 7. Good, Debuhu. What do you need to do now? All I need to do is factorize the trinomial. I let each bracket equal 0 in order to find x. Excellent, Debuhu. Do you think you can manage another one? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm up for it. Okay. Give this one a go. Solve for x in this equation. Let's see. The factors of 4 are plus or minus 1, 2, or 4. I'll try one first. No, it isn't a factor. Okay, I'll try 2. 2 doesn't work either. Why don't you try a negative number? Maybe negative 2. Good idea. If I substitute in negative 2, it gives me 0, which means that x plus 2 is a factor. Now I need to find the trinomial. The first term is x squared, because x times x squared gives me x cubed. The last term is positive 2 because 2 times 2 equals 4, and I represent the middle term as bx for now. x times bx is bx squared, and 2 times x squared is 2x squared. If I collect these, I need to get the second term in the cubic function, which is negative 2x squared, which means that b must be negative 4. Well done, Deboho. What's the next step? Next, we need to factorize the quadratic. But something isn't right here. The quadratic doesn't seem to factorize. That's all right. Do you remember what you need to do if the quadratic doesn't factorize? Don't we use the quadratic formula? 
That's right. Why not give it a try? You can leave your answer in the simplest third form. Looking at the quadratic function, I can see that a equals 1, b equals negative 4, and c equals 2. If I substitute that into the formula, I get x equals 2 plus root 2, x equals 2 minus root 2, and x equals minus 2. Excellent, Deboho. You've really got the hang of this, I think. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to look at the task video for this section in the Polynomial Functions task video. You'll also be able to learn more about polynomial functions on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.